Like it or not, the tax laws want you married. Hi, I'm financial planner Sean Mullaney. Let's discuss. So I see this debate online from time to time. I saw it this week on Facebook. Oh, you know, should we be, you know, is it better from a tax perspective to be married or to be single? And a lot of times the the debate boils down to, well, you have to look at your income this year and does one person make, you know, 200,000, the other person makes zero, or one person makes 150,000, the other makes one, uh, you know, 125,000, stuff like that. It's focused on this year's tax return. I don't think this that's where this question's answered. That's playing in the joints and some years it might favor singles just a little bit, many years it's going to favor marriage just a little bit. But to my mind, this year's tax return is chump change when we're thinking about is it better to be married or single when it comes to taxes. Here's the thing. Over the long term, it very much favors being married when it comes to taxes. Why the heck do I say it? I don't say it because of this year's tax return when we have W-2 income. I say it for two big reasons. One is retirement. The tax laws love married, retired people, right? They love, love, love married, retired people. I made this point on this week's episode of Choose a File. I'll link to that in the description below. Here's the thing, especially if we're early retired, we tend to, even if we're affluent, have very low taxable income, all right? So it looks like we're poor. We're not, but our tax return pretty much says, hey, they're pretty poor, because they're retired. Well, here's the thing. When we're early retired, the tax code gives us huge 10%, 12% brackets. It gives us a huge standard deduction. Now, yes, it gives those to single people, but nowhere near, you know, it's about double essentially for the married people. And the small income, it may be even the same single to married. It may not be that much just because on paper we artificially look like we're poor, whether we're single or married. So the tax laws love married, retired people. And this gives married, retired people more runway to do things like Roth conversions in early retirement and get really good tax results, right? So when we're thinking about being single or being married from a tax perspective, I would start the conversation with, oh boy, being retired and married, that's the sweet spot. All right, so that's one reason the tax laws want you married. The second reason the tax laws want you married is inheritance, right? We all die. So inheritance taxes matter, okay? Um, And here's the thing. The inheritance tax laws strongly favor uh, married couples, over leaving it to any other individual. Let's start with the health savings account. This is where it's it's huge in favor of being married, right? If we leave our health savings account to our spouse, great, tax-free to them, and it becomes their HSA, they get to use it in a very tax-efficient manner. Great asset to leave to your spouse. Well, what about if we leave it to our adult child? We leave it to a boyfriend or girlfriend. You know, we leave it to anyone, any other adult who is not our spouse. Guess what? It's fully taxable to them in the year of your death. Ceases being an HSA. It's a tax time bomb, right? If we're not leaving it to our spouse. So that's just one way that the inheritance tax laws strongly favor marriage. What about a Roth IRA? Someone inherits a Roth IRA from their spouse, they put in their own name, and they can live to 150 and never take an RMD from that thing. Well, if they're inheriting it from, if if the Roth IRA goes to anyone else other than a spouse, it's either going to be subject to a 10-year payout, not a terrible outcome, it's tax-free, but it's only for 10 years as opposed to the rest of my life. And if we leave it to what they call an eligible designated beneficiary, sure, they might get to take it out over RM, with RMDs over time, but they have to start emptying it in the year after my death versus the spouse could live another 50 years and never touch it if they don't want, right? So Roth IRAs favor spouses when they inherit. And what about traditional retirement accounts? Similar rules apply, not exactly the same rules, but basically, a, um, an inheriting spouse can make that traditional retirement account their own and then take RMDs based on their own age, which tends to be better than taking RMDs as an inheriting beneficiary or being subject to the 10-year rule or potentially both. So when we think about retirement tax law, when we think about inherited uh, asset or inherited retirement account tax law, they both strongly favor married people over single people. Well, okay. 
Um, does that may mean we should be getting married because of tax law? The answer is no, okay? Look, I'm Catholic. I strongly believe in the institution of marriage. So important for our lived experience. So important to love someone else. It's so important for our society. We should not, from a societal perspective, ever be making marriage decisions based on tax. But I'm also a follower of the financial independence movement. And the financial independence movement says... You should manage your financial affairs, generally speaking, so that no one financial decision controls your life, right? The whole idea behind financial independence is we're not going to be beholden to a W-2 employer. We're not going to be beholden to uh, consumption expenses. And we're certainly not going to be beholden to the Internal Revenue Code when we're making our decision about marriage. When we do a lot of things right, we certainly don't have to optimize every last dollar. Nobody in the financial independence movement says, well, I just never take vacation ever, ever, because that's the cheapest thing to do. That's not financial independence. The whole idea is that money works for you, not the other way around. So, of course, we're not going to make a marriage decision. Oh, we ran the numbers, and on next year's tax return, we're going to pay Uncle Sam $5,000 more. Well, who cares, right? That's finan- You are financially independent if you can say, who cares? Maybe not fully financially independent. You might have other issues. But you're not financially independent if you say, oh, I'm not going to get married because our taxes are going to go up $2,000 because we got married. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please mash that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.